Hello, friends. Welcome to 3ABN Worship Hour. I'm Pastor John Lomacang. I want to just say to you, welcome to 2022. The Lord has put on my heart a message, I believe, that will encourage you as we step into the unknown. But before we dive into the message, allow me to invite the Lord's presence to be with us so we can hear what the Spirit says to your heart and to mine. Father in heaven, we thank you. You have delivered us safely from 2021. And now that we step into 2022, we pray that our hearts and minds can be recommitted to you, that you can calibrate our thoughts, our intentions, that our desires and your desires would be merged. Lord, consume anything that is not a part of your plan and give us the courage to face what tomorrow brings, whether we are aware of it or not. Help us to place complete trust in you as you guide us through this unknown year. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, welcome to 2022. The year of the unknown, the year of the unknown and the possibilities, the year of challenges and blessings. And I begin by saying this year is like unlike any other because you've never lived it before. Its pages are clear. There's nothing written about your thoughts, actions, deeds, or words. And God has given you a clean slate to begin a new walk with him, a journey into the unknown. What has 2021 taught us? 2021 gave us 365 days to live our lives, 365 days to plan for our future. 2021 allowed us to inventory where we have been, what we have done, how we have failed, and how we have succeeded. And now that we step into this brand new unsullied year, God is saying to us, give me complete control because I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Friends, let me encourage you. 2021 brought with us with it a lot of disappointments and a lot of plans that we wish never came to fruition. But this year doesn't have to be the same. This year will present to us unlimited opportunities. And let me also say, all of those opportunities presented by God will come to fruition by God's plan. So as we look back on the failures and success, remember that 2022 now gives us the privilege to get rid of the old and begin to make room for the new. A number of years ago, I read a story about how the new year was celebrated in the older times of Italy. I don't know if it's done still to this day, but I was impressed by the story. Let me share that with you. Come with me to New Year's Eve in Italy. As midnight on New Year's Eve approached, the streets are cleared. Picture this with me. There is no traffic. There are no pedestrians. Even the police take cover. Suddenly at the stroke of midnight, the windows of the houses are swung wide open. And to the sound of laughter, music, and fireworks, each member of the family begins to throw something out of the window. Now you see why everyone, including the police, took cover. Some throw out old garments. Some throw out hated furniture, that plaid couch that you just couldn't get rid of. Others throw out personal possessions that remind them of something they want to forget about their past that they were determined to remove from their lives. So the question is, if that custom was celebrated in your family, here's the question, what would you throw out? What would you get rid of as you step into 2022? What in your life have you been yearning to get rid of, that you've been praying for God to remove, that you are saying, Lord, don't allow me to take that into a brand new year. I want to get rid of the old and begin to make room for the new. So 2022 is giving you the opportunity to get rid of the old and make room for the new. number of times I meet young people and I, I, I put out this paradoxical question that I pose to you today. How do we get to where we're going 
when we don't know where we're going. And I, I love to stand back and watch the young folk just hmm, try to figure the answer out. How do we get to where we're going when we really don't know where we're going? And I respond after I see them in a quandary, after their thoughts hit a wall, I say, commit the unknown future to the known God. Why? Because God says to us, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and plans not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And 2022 may just be the year when the plans that God has for your life come to fruition. Maybe it's advancing your education. Maybe it's getting married for those of you who are single. Maybe it's moving from where you are to where you know God has been saying to you, that's what I desire for you. Whatever the year may be, this is the year to commit the unknown future to the known God. When we look back at the children of Israel, we have to come to the conclusion that they didn't know where they were going either. And Paul the Apostle records the journey of Israel and is filled with lessons as we face the unknown. But one thing he says to us that I want to convey to you is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul. When he looks at the life of the children of Israel, when he looks at their journey in the wilderness and records all the things that they faced, the challenges that confronted them, the blessings they received, even the curses and the loss of valuable possessions and even some of their loved ones, he says these words to you in 2022. He says in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11, Now all these things happened to them as examples. Look at their lives. Compare it with your life. And they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Yeah, there's a lot in the Bible about the children of Israel. There's a lot about the things that they desired. The Lord brought them out of Egypt in a single day, but it took him 40 years to bring Egypt out of them. Are you one of those individuals that the Lord has been wrestling with for many, many years, maybe even decades? You know the way that you were raised was right. You know that what your mom and dad taught you was scriptural. But you've been wrestling because you desire so much of where you've come from that you've been hesitant to go where God is leading you. And you are stuck in the rut of, I'm going nowhere fast. Well, look at the life of the Israelites. A journey that should have taken just a short period of time extended to a 40-year journey because it took one day to get Israel out of Egypt, but it took 40 years to get Egypt out of Israel. And so the question to you as you enter this new year, what in your life is still there? What putrid behavior is still funking up your life and causing you to feel less than what God intends for you to be? What are you facing that you are refusing to give to God? What habit what practice, what desire are you going back to? Are you fighting with cigarettes, with alcohol, with immorality? What are you fighting with? Are you fighting with whether or not to honor God's holy Sabbath? Are you fighting with whether or not you believe that God exists or you're falling for the atheistic lie that there is no God? What are you fighting with? Remember, the Israelites faced many of the same things, but they learned the very hard way that it is only by trusting God with your day-by-day -day walk that you'll ever get to the destination that God foresees is in your blessed future. Consider the picture as I walk you through some of the journey of the Israelites from the land of Egypt to the land of Canaan at the Red Sea. When pursued by the army of the Egyptians, the Egyptians, the Egyptian army was extinguished like the flame of the tip of a candle. How? By the power of God's hand. And friends, you must understand that the enemy will pursue you all the days of your life. But as God stepped to the plate and fought the battle for the Israelites, he is willing to fight the battle for you. He said to them in Exodus 14, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord for the enemy that you see today, you'll see no more forever. You got enemies in your past? Commit your past to God. Commit your present to God. Allow the Lord to fight your battles for you. When they travel that road, the same road that became the highway of deliverance for Israel was the way of death for the armies of Pharaoh. It was the same road. But the question is, whose army are you in? 
Let me encourage you, get into the Lord's army. If you're on the right road, but in the wrong army, the same results could happen to you that happened to Pharaoh's army. You could be on the same road as the Israelites, but your destination is not the same. You're moving down the way of death when they were moving down the way of the promised land. Slavery in Egypt was terrible. It had tragic memories for the children of Israel. But on the other side of the door, on the other side of the Jordan, the past began to lose its impact on their minds. And through one of Israel's greatest journeys, today God wants to teach us a lesson. He wants to teach us a vivid lesson. I'm going to break it down into three categories. The timing of their journey, the location of their journey, and the challenges of their journey. The timing, the location, and the challenges. The timing of the story was from the wilderness to the promised land, a journey intended to take just a few months extended to more than four decades. The location of the story, the crossing of the Jordan. In that crossing, angry voices challenged them at the Exodus. The army of the Egyptians desired nothing more than to crush these who were being delivered by the mighty hand of God. The angry voices were silenced though when they got to the Jordan. However, in their journey, gravestones dotted the, the wilderness journey. Those who chose not to obey God, he freed them on no conditions. But there were conditions to go into the promised land. Past failures and victories merged at the border of the promised land. Yet they failed to completely trust God. However, they knew in their journey, and God put this in their heart, God gave them a last push a final hill, a grand finale. In that desert, they learned that God, in the midst of all their trials, all their challenges, he could still give them the desire to push, to go on to that final hill, to go forward to that grand finale. And after 40 years, Joshua and Caleb, of the men that were 20 years old and older, entered into the promised land. Why? Because they trusted God. Today, God is saying to you, he wants you to be a Joshua, he wants you to be a Caleb. And who were they? When the false reports came back from the leaders of Israel, when the men that God had commissioned to give direction to the 12 tribes of Israel decided not to embrace God's promises, they brought back a false report. However, Joshua and Caleb kept trusting the Lord. When the, when the 10 leaders decided that the giants were too great in the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, all of those who dwelt in the promised land that they were going to inherit, when they looked at the people, they had a faint heart. But Joshua and Caleb didn't look at the people. They looked at the God that had given them the promise. You see, the people may be big. The trials may be big. The challenges of your past may, may step over into 2022 with you, but they're not bigger than your God. Never allow your challenges to appear bigger than your God. What God did for Caleb and Joshua, God wants to do for you. But there was a challenge in the journey because God allowed Moses to take the children of Israel only so far. And when Joshua accepted the call to take the wheel and decide to lead the children of Israel, because of his lack of experience, he was challenged by more than two and a half million Israelites. And yet we're going to focus on the parting words of Moses, which became the marching orders of Joshua. If you have your Bibles, go there with me. I'm going to read now in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 20, all the way to Deuteronomy, chapter 11, and verse 6. It seems like it's long, but it's not. But I want you to hear the parting words of Moses to that young man named Joshua. Two and a half million people. How is he going to guide them? Listen to Moses' words. Deuteronomy 10 verse 20. Moses is speaking. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him. And to him you shall hold fast. Notice those words. Serve him. Fear him. Hold fast. And take oaths in his name. Verse 21. He is your praise and he is your God. Who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen? Have you ever paused and asked, who has delivered me as God has? Who has blessed me as God has? That is what Moses is saying to Joshua. Who can do for you what God has done for you? Who can bring you from that, from that land of slavery 
to the journey of the land of promise? Who can, who can fight all your battles and keep the serpents and scorpions from, from bringing you to your demise in the wilderness? Only God can. Then he continues in Deuteronomy 10 and verse 22. Your fathers went down to Egypt with 70 persons. And now the Lord your God has made you, listen to this, as the stars of heaven in multitude. What is he saying to Joshua? You may begin with little, but God can multiply your little and make it much. God is amazing. God can take your little as he did for Joshua and Moses and multiply it like the stars of heaven. But he continues speaking. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 1. He says, Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. You see, friends, blessings always are connected to conditions. God wants to bless you, but he does not bless you without conditions. Obedience is the prerequisite to blessings. If God is saying, do this, understand there is no second category. You cannot receive the blessings of God in 2022 without complying with the conditions of those blessings. He continues in verse 2 of Deuteronomy chapter 11. He says, no today, that I do not speak with your children who have not known and who have not seen the chastening of the Lord your God, his greatness and his mighty hand and his outstretched arm, verse 3, his signs and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to all his land. Look at verse 4. What he did to the army of Egypt to their horses and their chariots, how he made the waters of the Red Sea overflow them as they pursued you. And he continues. And how the Lord has destroyed them to this day. What he did for you in the wilderness until you came to this place and what he did to Dathan and, uh, and Abraham, the son of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, their households, their tents, and all their substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. What is Moses saying to Joshua? God, by his grace and by his power, by his outstretched arm, has made sure that every obstacle that was placed before you by the enemy, everything he intended to destroy you in the wilderness, by your obedience, I stepped in to defend you. By your willingness to continue following me by faith, although you did not see the promised land, I brought those things to pass. And God is saying the same to you for 2022. You don't see what your future is. You may have some idea, but God sees it much clearer than you will ever see it. God is saying, look at how you've survived to this day. Do you, think you did that? You, do you think you did that by some great and wonderful plan? No, I was beating back the enemy every day of your life. I stood firmly with you. And he's saying to Joshua, I'm going to pass the mantle to you. The God that I trusted, I want you to be the God that you will trust. In the same way, he's saying to Joshua, as I'm saying to you, he said to Joshua, leave Egypt behind. I'm saying to you, leave 2021 behind. The Lord is saying to us, here we stand on the wet paint of 2022. And we can cite any number of reasons why we could be discouraged. Any number of reasons can come to the forefront why we can't do this or can't do that. There are multiple instances where you almost did not make it. And we can complain sometimes that the journey took so long. However, here you are today. Why are you here today? Because God's dream for you is not going to be faltered, not going to be prevented by what happened in 2021, because he still says, I know the plans I have for you. Let me tell you my personal experience. Nobody could have ever told me I will be doing what I am today. It took a long time to get here. But I trusted God on the days of plenty and on the days of lean. I trusted God when it seemed like the future was bleak, when it seemed like the enemy had finally found my Achilles heel. I kept trusting God and I'm still here today to God be the glory. I'm saying to you, all your battles are no reason to be discouraged. All the things you faced in 2021 is no reason to give up because we're standing on the promises of God. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 7 to 9. 
Here's what Moses said to Joshua. But your eyes have seen every great act, the Lord, which he did. Therefore, listen, you shall keep every commandment which I command you today, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to give your fathers to them and their descendants. Notice what kind of land. A land flowing with milk and honey. You might say, I don't drink milk and I'm not too crazy about honey. Those are just symbols of the blessings of God. God wasn't saying that all they're going to get is milk and honey. But what God was saying, these are lands that are flowing with abundant provision from my hand. Let me say to you, friends, 2022, God has abundant provisions for your land. God has abundant provisions that he wants to put in your hand. The land of abundant provision and the hand that God says will embrace those abundant provisions. So while the world is getting weaker, God is saying to you, be strong and stand firm with my command. You see, the very thing that God did for Moses and Joshua, he's willing to do for you. He's willing to do for your family. He's willing to do for your children, for your spouse. He's willing to do for your educational goals. He's willing to do for your spiritual goals. God can take your humdrum Bible study life to a magnificent excursion through the word if you just simply commit yourself to him. As Moses challenged Joshua, he says, be strong. Let God's word be your guide. I'm saying to you, 2022 doesn't have to be a repeat of the humdrum Bible study life of 2021. It doesn't have to be the time where your, your schedule was so busy that you didn't have time for God. And sometimes God may interrupt your greatest plans to simply say, I miss my time with you. So friends, husbands, lead your family to the altar of worship daily. Husbands, be the priest of your homes as your wife is looking for someone to be the light in the house, to be the one who can reflect the character of Jesus. Be the husband that molds the mind of your children, that they can know that even when the days seem to be uh, with, filled with challenges, that God can carry them through. Be the one that molds the mind of your daughter and your son so that when they grow up, you can understand that it was God that led their parents and the same God that led you when they were growing up is the same God that's going to lead them when they get older. God wants to do the same for you. But the first ingredient for 2022 is that we have to be strong in the Lord. Look at Joshua chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says in Joshua 1 and verse 1, and verse 1, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. And the Lord gave him some words that I'm going to share with you in just a moment. The Lord gave Joshua some words that he wants to leave with you today. Let me make the very important point, however. You see, God listened to Joshua when Joshua spoke because Joshua listened to God when he spoke. Friends, if you want God to hear you when you speak, you've got to hear God when he speaks. If you want God to follow your plans, you've got to first follow God's plans. If you want your life to be a blessing to your family and your friends, you got to first allow the Lord to be the blessing of your life. You will never pour out what God has not poured in and expect it to be a blessing. If you want your plans to be that which brings great and untold blessings in the future, you've got to allow those plans to be in harmony with God's will. Because he says, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do that the Son may be glorified. God is not going to bless you that will cause you to take the glory from him. If you're planning things that are not in harmony with God's will, you are running backward. You are, you, are, you are running 10 miles an hour on a treadmill going absolutely nowhere. The treadmill of your promises will exhaust you. But if you stand on the solid ground of God's promises, it will prosper you. I'm saying to you today, listen to God if you expect God to listen to you. Joshua believed God. He didn't just have a commitment to God. He believed God. Abraham believed God, and that's why he was called the father of the faithful. He got ready for the land that he saw by faith. Why? Because God made the promise. If God made a promise to you two years ago or five years ago, trust God because God knows. I'll say that again. 
Only God knows when those plans are to come to fruition. Sometimes I get phone calls from people that say, Pastor, I need a job. And I say to them, God knows you need a job. Did you pray about it? They said, I prayed about it, but it still hasn't happened yet. But God wants to do a new thing. You got to wait on the Lord. Wait upon the Lord and he will renew your strength. Sometimes before you get the job, the company has to be built or the position has to open. Wait on the Lord. Don't be in a hurry. Abraham believed God not because he had proof, but because he had God. If you have God, you have everything. God will provide all of your need according to his riches and glory. Even the Apostle Paul can tell you when he was going to Rome as a prisoner, even in the midst of a difficult journey, his belief was padded by his faith in God. With the storms of life swirling all around him, ready to consume him in an instant, he believed God because God's word was continually with him. He said, I believe God that it shall be just as it was told me. Look at Acts 27 and verse 25. And I'm saying this to you today, friends. Believe God, not because you have proof, but because you have God. Look at Acts 27 and verse 25. Therefore, take heed, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. It's going to be just as God said it's going to be. It's not going to be how you hope it to be. It's going to be just as God said it's going to be. What is that like? How am I supposed, how am I supposed to know? How am I supposed to know what that's going to be? You got to trust God. Give God time to work out his plans for your life. You see, on the surface, it may seem that God's plan and God's word is difficult to follow. But difficulty is the result of choosing not to follow God's word. Let me also encourage you, the day is coming when we won't have God's word to follow. The day is coming when the plans of God would not be visible on the written page. That's why you got to do like David did. Thy word I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Allow the word of God to be your daily meditation. And then you'll be able to say, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. God's plans are there. He'll work them out. But there's a day coming. There's a great crisis on the horizon when will it occur? We have no idea, but we can trust the words of God. You see, the reason why we should study God's word is because the days are coming as prophesied by God through the prophet Amos. Listen to what he says, which is the reason why the word of God should be near and dear to us. Amos chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. Hear the words of the Lord. He says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And watch this. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. What's going to happen? The days are coming when our Bibles are going to be confiscated. And I'm not being a prophet of neg neg negativity. I'm just simply telling you what God's word has says. The days are coming when the thing that we take for granted will no longer be accessible. What other reason can you give for making the word of God your study? What other purpose can you give for saying, I want God's word to be stored in my heart while I still have access to it. The days are coming. God wants to do a new thing by reigniting your love for his word. The second thing, the second thing is this. Dedication to God's word will create in you a desire for a new thing. Why do we need a new thing? Because the devil is busy trying to divert our minds from the new thing that God wants to do in us. He's trying to distract us, whether by social media, by entertainment, by problems and trials and tribulations, whatever the method may be. He's trying to distract us so that we can put our hope and trust in things that God never made a promise through. Be very careful when the devil reaches out and tries to give you that lollipop of false promises and say, if you follow this, then you'll be prosperous. Don't fall for the lie. There are many people today that know the truth, but they don't love the truth. They don't love the truth the way that God desires for them to love it. Do you love the truth or do you just know the truth? There's quite a difference between knowing the truth and loving the truth. When you love the truth, you build a shield against deception. And why is that vitally important? 
because the days are also coming that many who have known the truth and have not embraced the truth like Joshua and Moses and Caleb, like Elijah and John the Baptist and Paul and Abraham, these men were serious about their walk with God. And so many of our contemporary leaders, I've learned that the greatest blessing in my own life is when I take God's word seriously and study it and pray for God to reveal something more to me that I've not yet seen. When you do that, you build a wall that will shield you from deception. Listen to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. The Bible speaks about the day that's coming. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Why? Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Oh, I hope you're ready for what I'm about, for, for what I'm about to say. We are living in a day and age where lies are swirling all around us. Contemporary lies. Internet lies. Political lies. Religious lies. We are being swarmed by an army of lies trying to distract our minds away from the word of God. That's why God's word is the only safeguard against the deception. Without the word of God, the smallest problem will present the largest challenge. Without the word of God, the weakest foe will have the strongest impact. Ellen White says in the book, Darkness Before Dawn, page 36 in paragraph two, very short, but very profound. She says, listen to this. None but those who have fortified the mind with the truths of the Bible will stand through the last great conflict. What does she say? None but those who have fortified their minds with the truth will stand through the last great conflict. And how is that? When Jesus faced temptation in the wilderness, hear me carefully, the contemporary Christian, hear me carefully, the one who loves the music that we sing. There's nothing wrong with music, but don't forget this. When Jesus faced the trials and temptations of the enemy, he didn't say it is sung. He said it is written. He pointed to the unwavering, powerful word of God. The word of God is powerful and quick and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit and joints and marrows. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4 and verse 12, let the word of God be your sword. Let the word of God be your defense. I love music. I'm a Christian singer. I love music, but I will tell you in my hour of deep, deep need, in my hour where I needed counsel, I turned to the unfailing word of God and I have not been ashamed. In crossing the Jordan, Joshua witnessed the power of God. Why? Because just as Moses told him, he trusted the God who had a, a retinue of miracles behind him. You see, the God of your past can do even more in your future journey, but you got to keep walking. And sometimes God is not going to part the waters of your challenges until you put your foot in the water. He is not unable to move, but sometimes he's saying to you, you've got to move if you want to see my hand move. What happened in Joshua's experience? Look at Joshua 3 and verse 17. When they decided to take that step of faith, the Bible says all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. That's right. But they had to take that step of faith. How is your faith in 2022? Have you brought a fractured faith to a brand new year? Do you still feel that God is not with you? Friends, let me encourage you. Don't base your future on feeling. Feeling is just as deceptive as the day changes. A sunny day, you may feel good. A rainy day, you may feel discouraged. A snowy day, you may just feel shut down, depending on where you live. A day of prosperity, God is all in all. But a day of adversity, you ask the question, where is God? Friends, let me tell you, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't change, but it's us that change. When God called the children of Israel to go through, there were many battles ahead of them. When you look at the story of the leading of the children of Israel, the battle of Jericho was still ahead of them. Achan in the camp was still in the camp. The defeat at the victory of Ai was still ahead of them, but they trusted God. You see, why did they trust God? Because the promises of God were sure, but there are conditions to the promises of God. The point is, before we claim the promises, we must abide by the conditions. Listen to this, friends. Joshua 1 and verse 6. What did Moses tell Joshua to do? Listen to these words, which I now challenge you with. He says, 
Be strong and of good courage. Get it? For 2022, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land, get this, which I swore to their fathers to give them. Let me pause and say something. They didn't get the land by winning the battle. The Lord won the battle and gave them the land. But they focused on the giants there rather than the God that was greater than all of their giants. Verse 7 of Joshua 1. Only be strong and very courageous. Let me tell you something. If you don't have any courage, buy yourself a can of courage and drink it. Get on your knees and pray and say, Lord, strengthen my courage. My courage is weak, but strengthen it. Only be strong and, a very, and very courageous that you may observe and do all according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. And watch this. God does not want us to vacillate. He said to Joshua, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Prosperity is always conditional. And look at verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. What is he saying? Let your words be flavored with the presence and power of God's word. But you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. Did you get that? He said to Joshua, when you meditate on God's word, God's word will be in your mouth. I've discovered people have a lot of issues of life. Those issues begin here. Then they find their place here. Then they reveal themselves here. But if God's word is hidden in your heart and stored in your mind, you'll speak the word of God as he said then the word of God will be in your mouth and you will have good success. The blessings of God are always connected to the leading of God, always connected to us being willing to be obedient to God. But don't miss this next point. God may not lead you where you want to go, but he always leads us where it is best for us to go. God may not lead you where you want to go, ask Jonah, but God will always lead you where he knows is best for you to go. Now, my third point, the third point. When God is with you, there is no reason to fear. When God is with you and he promises to be with you in 2022, he promises to be with your family. He promises to be with your children. I know people that have been praying for decades for their children. Pastor, will my children be saved? Let me tell you, friends, God says, I will contend with those who contend with me and I will save their children. There is no need to fear that God is not concerned about your children. He told Peter, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is fighting for the salvation of your children. God is fighting for the salvation of your spouse. God is fighting for the salvation of your cousins and your in-laws and your aunts and your uncles. Keep them before the Lord in prayer. I'll tell you something about God. He has to work long because the human heart is recalcitrant, but God can work longer than the human heart can resist him. God will always be with you. There is no reason to fear. Joshua 1 verse 9, look what the Lord told Joshua. He says, have I not commanded you? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you. Get this, wherever you go. My wife and I have been a lot of places. We've been on shaky airplanes. We've been in terrible storms. We've been on ships that have been tossed in the night winds and the waves that were angry. But God told us, be strong and of good courage. Your God is with you wherever you go. I tell the story about a, a pastor who was on a plane. This was a story that was told a, a while ago. It was in our time of flight. But when the plane was being tossed, he said, I, I whispered a prayer. I whispered a prayer. And he says, I knew that God was going to answer my prayer and that the passengers would be safe. I was on a flight one day coming back from Florida on Southwest Airlines, and I was coming home to change and the very next day go to the Philippines to, to join with the Heritage Singers as I was singing with them in 1991. And I remember very well coming into St. Louis at the stormy part of the year. 
If you have not lived in the Midwest, it could be 70 degrees one day, 30 the next, strong storms, and then snow. It just changes randomly. We say here in the Midwest, if you don't like the weather, just wait. It's going to change. But here we were descending in St. Louis, and I was sitting next to a lady who was sitting next to her husband, and the plane was dancing through the sky. I mean, it was going down and coming up. It was shaking, rattling and rolling. It was fairly frightening. But I was listening to my songs in my headset. I was listening to the music that I was practicing. So when I joined with the rest of the group in the Philippines there in Mindanao, the heritage singers, that I would know the songs. I would bring them back to my memory. And I remember listening to a song that simply says, I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. And I heard that lady next to me whimpering and burying her head in her uh, husband's shoulder. And, and just when the plane would dip, she would, she would let out a small scream. But I heard it. And I had some headsets on. And I took them off and I tapped the lady on the shoulder. And I said, I have a song I want you to listen to. I have a song I want you to listen to. She says, well, who are you? And I said, I'm John Lomaking. I'm a pastor. Uh, well, what song do you want me to listen to? Just listen to it. And she put the headsets on and she listened to that song, Peace Speaker, until the plane landed safely at the St. Louis airport. She took the headsets off. She says, what do you do? I said, I, I told you I'm a pastor. See, she said, well, why are you so calm? She said, you should be a motivational speaker. I said, I'm not a motivational speaker, but I trust God's word. And these words I never forgot. She said to me, thank you for allowing me to travel with you. You see, friends, I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. And when the storms of life rattle your faith, when the difficulties of life challenge the things you have read, when the storms of life say to you, it's only by God's grace that you will land on the ground of God's promises, hold on to the Lord. When she said, thank you for allowing me to travel with her, with me. Thank you for allowing me to travel with you. She told me that. I thought, wow, praise God. Once I was on my way to Lake Tahoe, this is my wife and I, we were living in California. And I, I saw a sticker one day and I cut off just the small portion that I really liked. And on the back of our forerunner, when people drove behind us, we had this black sticker with the white lettering, I'm on a mission for God. And I love that when people pull this over at rest areas, they say, I saw your sticker. And they say, what do you do? I said, I'm a pastor. I'm on a mission from God. Friends, I want you to be on a mission for God. When you are on a mission for God, you can accept the words of Joshua, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You see, the simple math is this. To all who seek him, Christ will become the present help in time of need, and they will have a strong faith in the day of trial. When you trust God, you'll have a strong day. You'll have a strong faith in the day of trial. Why is that necessary? Because in 2022, the economy may not be with you, but God is. Your family may not be with you, but God is. Your diagnosis may not be the best, but God is always at his best. But the Lord cannot bless you and do a new thing if you are content with the old. Be strong and of good courage. God will be with you wherever you go. But the next condition is God cannot bless you with a new thing if you are content with the old. Here are the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Listen to this. And this applies very much to 2022. As a matter of fact, to every day of your life. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, I've applied that to 2021 and 2022. All things have passed away. 2021, all things have become new. But how are they new? If anyone is in Christ, that person, that young man, that young woman, that husband, that wife, that family, that marriage, that is a new thing, a new creation. God can make something new out of something old. God can bring blessings out of the pit of your life. God can turn your dark days into sunny days. God can do anything that has never been the challenge. But the challenge is, do you want to trust God? Do you want to be a new thing? Here's my words of encouragement, four very quick points. Don't focus on what you came out of. 
Focus on where God is leading you. Don't focus on what you came out of. Focus on where God is leading you. That is why, get this, that is why the rear view mirror is so much smaller than the windshield. So many of you spend your time looking back. God is saying, look at the grand possibilities before you. Don't become a rear view mirror Christian. Focus on the promises of God that are ahead of you. When we focus on the promises of God ahead of us, we don't get distracted by the by the failures that are behind us. Second thing, don't focus on the deserted wilderness behind you. Focus the, on the abundant promised land ahead of you. Don't focus on the deserted wilderness behind you. Focus on the abundant field of promises ahead of you. And while time is winding down, make sure your prayers are going up. Time is winding down, but now more than ever before, we should make sure that our prayers are going up we will learn that the only thing that is good about bad news is it is temporary and it will keep us on our knees. God allows difficulty to come to remind us that we should not feel that we can stand on our feet until we have learned that we could kneel on our knees. Don't focus on the things that we can't control. Focus on the one that is still in control. The problem is not God. The problem is us. We try to control things that only God knows he can control. And when often we settle for less, help us to remember, Lord, don't settle for less than what God desires for you. God wants to do a new thing. Many years ago, I read a story about one of our presidents and I looked at his life. It's just like the journey of all the Christians. When we look at the life of where this president eventually ended up, he had the life like Joshua. Listen to his resume. Difficult childhood, less than one year of formal schooling. Failed in business in 1831. Defeated for legislature in 1832. Again, failed in business in 1833. Elected to legislature in 1834. That's what happened. He was elected to legislature in 1834. Fiance died. His fiance died. She died. When did she die? In 1835. He was defeated for Speaker of the House in 1838. Defeated for electorate in 1840. He got married in 1842. Only one of his sons lived past the age of 18. Defeated for Congress in 1843. It keeps going. Elected to Congress in 1846. Defeated again for Congress in 1848. Defeated for Senate in 1855. Defeated for President in 1856. Defeated for Senate in 1858. Elected President in 1860. Who am I talking about? Notice all the defeats and all the failures. But he kept going. He kept going because he believed that the God he served. And when you study about this man's life, he had a connection with God. Let me tell you what he said before I tell you who he is. He said... The probability that we may fail in the struggle ought not deter us from the support of the cause we believe to be just. His name is Abraham Lincoln. Failed, 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 defeated, 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 eventually became president in 1860. So many of us fail when we're that much closer to our destination than we used to be. So many people fall short of the blessing of God because they cannot endure the defeats of their lives. And I'm sure that you listening to me today, I'm sure you've had defeats. I'm sure you had trials and tribulations. I'm sure that you've faced things that have taken your faith almost to the point of exhaustion. But learn from those who stuck in there, who hung in there. Winston Churchill said, success is never final and failure is never fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. When you study how Winston Churchill became a statesman that many people inspired. That was the cadence. That was the mantra of his life. Success is never final and failure is never fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. God, if God brought you to 2022, he wants to give you the courage to continue and the courage to trust his word is what's going to count in the end. You can give up in the wilderness and say, God is unfaithful. God has not given me what I desire. The reason may be because what you desire is not what God wants you to have. And he'll hold you back until you say, 
Let me accept what God alone has for me. Remember, once again, he's the one that says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. Henry Ford forgot to put a reverse gear in his first car. Can you imagine that? The very first Ford car had no reverse gear. Now, that may be an epiphany. Maybe he never intended to go backwards. Well, we know the story. He just forgot to put a reverse gear. But that was the way he thought. When you build something, it's intended to go forward. Why put a gear to go backward? Some of us only need a forward gear because some of us are too familiar with going backward. Success is not how you start, but success is how you finish. Friends, God's got a tremendous plan for your life. Success is not how you start, but success is how you finish. For Paul, the apostle, Jerusalem was a tough place, but he continued trusting God. It was a place of torment and tribulation, but Jerusalem was not his goal. Heaven was. Listen to the words of the apostle Paul in Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Notice what he says. He says, but none of these things moved me. All that he went through, none of these things moved him, he said. None of them moved him. Nor do I count my life dear to myself, he said, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. He says, if you're going to continue going forward, you need the grace of God. That's why toward the end of his life, he made the statement, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. I'm going to say that to you. 2022 is just beginning, but let me tell you, as never before, fight a good fight of faith. Stay in there and finish the course so one day you can say, I kept the faith. And then you'll be able to say what the Apostle Paul continued to say. There is therefore a crown of righteousness laid up for me. And not for me only, but unto all those that love is appearing. Are you looking for the crown? Well, if you remember the life of Jesus, the cross comes before the crown. But God is the specialist. And God will work through your failures to reverse them to become successes. Well, how do I know that? How do I know that God can work through our failures and turn them around into successes. How do I know that God can take the worst plans and later on turn those plans around that his better plans will rise to the surface? Paul knows that. Romans 8, 28, have you forgotten that? He says, and we know that all things work together for good. Not all good things, but all things. The bad and the good, the ugly and the pretty, the up and the down the plenty and the few, all things work together for good to those who, get this, love God. The question is, do you love God? If you love God, all the things you face, young lady, is going to work out. Patient husband, it's going to work out. Desperate single lady, desperate single young man, wondering what your future is, it's going to work out. If you love God, it's going to work out. If you are one of the called according to his purpose, it's going to work out. But as I close, let me give you some very important counsel. The question is, do we believe? Do we really believe that all things work together for good to those who love God? Here's the formula for God to do a new thing in your life. You cannot start the next chapter of your life if you keep reading the last one. Did you hear what I said? You can't start the next chapter of your life if you're stuck in the chapter of 2021 or 20 or 19 or 18. Stop reading the last chapter and let God do a new thing in your life. The formula for God to take you on a new walk, a new journey, you'll never make room in your mind for Canaan if you keep looking back to Egypt. Yeah, you had failures. Yeah, there are things you did that you wish you never did, but make room in your mind for Canaan. And stop making room in your mind for Egypt. The formula for getting ready for God to do a new thing is, it is not what we need, but it is whom we need. It is not what we paid for, but what Jesus paid for. It is not the thrill of getting more, but it is the blessing of being more. It is not the connection to earthly relatives, but the connection to our heavenly Father. Yes, God wants to do a new thing in your life for 2022, but are you ready for that new thing? God can do amazingly, abundantly above all that you can ask or think 
Well, how do I know that? There were intervals in my ministry that I wanted to give up. But I look back on those days when I was about to break like a, a bruised reed in the wind. And I heard a still small voice say to me, hold on. The best is yet to come. Pastor John wouldn't be talking to you today if he had given up in the difficult moments of life. My wife and I would not be in our 38th year of marriage if we allowed the difficulties of the world to crush us. We could have been working somewhere else, doing something else, because God allows those trials to come to refine us, not to break us, not to bruise us. God desires to do something new. And the fact of the matter is we are not already there yet. But here are the parting words of the Apostle Paul. He says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, Hear these words as I talk about the new thing that God wants to do in your life. 2021 is gone. It's buried. It's never going to come back. And some of you are saying, to God be the glory. I don't want to see it again. But 2022 lies before you. Clear pages. Here are the words of a man who understands what it means to press. Philippians 3 verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, friends, time to press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, he says in verse 13, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, if there's one thing you do, here it is, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And in one of my favorite books, Desire of Ages, God's servant says this on page 224 and 225, God never leads his children otherwise than they would choose to be led. If they could see the end from the beginning and discern the glory of the purpose which they are fulfilling as co-workers with him. Friends, God wants to do a new thing in us, but, can, but it can only occur if we allow the Lord to be in us. 2022 is before you. God is with you. Be strong and have good courage. The future is going to be bright. There are going to be some rainy days, but the sun will come out tomorrow, as the songwriter said. God wants to do a new thing. And I say to you once again, welcome to 2022. Let us paint dry on the promises of God.